Just a quick, also a quick update. Um, everybody knows that um, we were saying goodbye to Jack of Jack and Marianne. You remember Jack Hanger was going to go on be with the Lord. Well, he's pretty stubborn. <laughs> um, I got to see Jack this week, and how's he, Connie? Have you seen him? He's doing great. He's getting stronger and stronger. Um, keep praying. It's a crazy testimony. It's amazing what God did, but keep praying for him. Uh, and he wants to. He wanted to come back today. I said no. Um, so he's got to get stronger. So keep praying, okay? Thanks. And now, Lord, we just ask that you would speak through Carl this morning, that you would put power in his words, that you would anoint uh, the going out of your word, Lord. And uh, Father, we just thank you for him. Bless you, Father. Amen. Amen. You know, when, I, when he's praying, I keep my eyes open, and so I can see how many people nod yes when he said, Lord, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> so, I knew who did, and I know who didn't. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, before we get started, uh, I'm going to tell you a couple of things. One is I have a neighbor uh, that lives upstairs from me. Uh, her name's Perla, and her husband's name's Zach, and they've been really kind to me, very nice, and, uh, and we every once in a while we get a chance to chat, but not much. And I've invited them to church a couple of times, but they've always been out of town and stuff. But yesterday she texted me and let me know that her dad's in ICU. And, uh, and so actually I have a friend out there in Tucson that's a vineyard pastor, and he's going to go pray for him today. And, you know, it's uh, just opening the door much wider. I'm not a, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big... I'm not, I'm not a fan of anything that's instantaneous, unless it's God. Right. And that's not always God when something happens. But So when, when I'm trying to share my faith with somebody, I just try to be myself and, and let them see Jesus and, and, and try to... And, and what happens is they, they grow an affection towards me. And so then when something happens, they call me. When her little kitten died, uh, you know, she called on me, you know, so I was able to give her a big hug and uh, help her say goodbye to the kitten. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say anything else. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, her dad's Paul, and he's in the ICU now, and I've got a friend of mine going to pray for him, and I've got friends around the world praying for him, and so can we pray for him? Lord Jesus, uh, we lift up Perla and Zach, and we lift, lift up her dad, Paul. Lord, I don't know what's wrong. I just know he's not in a good place, and not in a healthy place. So, Lord, I pray that as Mark goes and prays for him, that, that there'll be uh, a sense of your presence and your power. Lord, you raise him up. And bless Zach and Perla, Lord, as they work through the fear and uh, try to stand strong. But Lord, give them strength. We bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, last week, I had last Monday, Tuesday, I had the uh, privilege of hanging out with this guy. He's in my the first chapter of my book, uh, and I said that he's the he's the prototypical nerd. Uh, they 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 uh, they modeled the nerds after him. And so he's heard about this all over the world. And so I was with him Monday and Tuesday. I've known him since 1965. And so we hung out today together. And, and since he was, his dad was John Wimber's best friend. So we met John when John was like 26. And uh, so we hung out. And, and since uh, we got to know each other, in about 1997 he converted to orthodoxy. And if you don't know about orthodoxy, it's, really, it's high church. So you got, on one end of the spectrum, you got high church. On the other spe end of the spectrum, you have us. <laughs> so, we perfected low church. Um, and there had to be a spot for us somewhere, right? So, um, but I had a great time with him. It was really, it was a great time most of the time, except for he, he took me on a, on his motorbike, like, like a, I don't know, like a scooter. 
Whoa. downtown San Diego when there's traffic there for the baseball game. And and I was I would he's kept trying to get me to say the rosary. Right. Yeah, you know, and convert. And I just all I could say is, Oh Jesus, Jesus, help me God, help me God. I was so scared. And then I realized later that he was it was payback for calling him a nerd all these years. <laughs> It just wasn't nice. Uh, but I had a wonderful time with them. And the Orthodox faith, these guys, they're very serious. And they're very deep. And, and I, I, I benefit greatly from spending time with them. He can spouse the theology of, of, the, of that group really well. But what I appreciate, that he's a part of this spectrum and uh, diff different parts of the body of Christ. And he is he really devoted to Jesus. And he's, it's wonderful. It was wonderful to be with him. And it was wonderful for, for me to be with somebody that's not my tribe. You know? And I, I would recommend it highly. If you have Catholic friends, you have Anglican friends, you have uh, Pentecostal friends, you have Baptist friends, you need to spend some time with them. And not argue with them. Listen to them. Learn from them. Grow a little bit, if, if you need to. If you, <laughs> I mean, if you don't need to, like Don, um, you know, he wouldn't benefit at all. <laughs> but, but most of you would, and uh, there's no way I'm not picking on him after his start today. So, <laughs> oh man. Okay, we've been uh, taking a little journey through uh, regarding the life of Paul. And I'll just read a little paragraph I wrote and then make a comment. Okay, over the past four weeks, we've had, taken a look at the, the Apostle Paul and his extraordinary journey. It began with his personal testimony before King Agrippa. Don did that and was brilliant. And where he shared this encounter with the resurrected Christ on the road to Damascus. Paul went on to become a, he went from being a persecutor of the church to a prisoner of Christ. Now living for him, he was happy to die for him. <laughs> Writing to live as Christ and die as gain. And I think last week, I didn't see the video, but I understood that you talked about how to share your faith and, and communicate your faith with others. <laughs> how about... Well, I didn't know where it was. Eva was very sick, and so she, yeah, right. So don't give her a bad time. <laughs> anyway, Paul had a burning, burning, burning uh, desire to share the gospel. Because you know what he knew? He knew this. If, if he shared the gospel and the Holy Spirit revealed the truth of it in a person's life, their life would be changed forever. Mm -hmm. Forever. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, being, being available to, in fact, number one, being a person that people like uh, and love and enjoy is really important. It really, really builds a bridge that Jesus can walk across. And so if we're kind to people and generous with people, loving towards people, uh, they'll, walk, they'll walk that bridge. There's, there's no chance they're going to walk that bridge if they think you're uh, just going to beat them up for the bad things they do. You know, and Jesus doesn't bat, beat us up for the bad things we do, right? Anybody ever here do a bad thing? <laughs> Look at that, no hands. Okay. I, now I see your hats. I didn't see your big Pharisee hats before. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I didn't see those. Took me by surprise. Um, can we... Um, Put the Chester thing, pour it up, Chester son. All Christian, the Christian ideal has not been tried and found wanting. It has been, been found to be difficult and left untried. Now, I'm going to share with you some of the, the teachings of Paul, just some of the characteristics that he, he points out and some of the instruction he gives the church. And, um, and it's, I'm only using a few, but... I think you, you'll probably agree with me at the end that there are a lot of things that we just skip over. We go, oh yeah, 
Oh yeah, I know it. And it reminds me very much of uh, sometimes that people that come for counsel, and uh, and so you give them their counsel, and they go okay, and then they come back the next week and they tell you the same problem. You go, well, did you do what I told you to do or encourage you to? Do? Well, no, but I want I want I want to go ahead. It's like God doesn't really work that way. I mean, if you don't learn the lesson the first time. You will. The 32nd time. Or the, whatever time it takes. He, he, he's incredibly patient. And long-suffering. And long-suffering. That word really should have our pictures by it. Because he's long-suffering with us. And, but he will wait until he gets the job done. I was talking to some friends uh, Monday that uh, we were discussing somebody that we knew that is no longer in misery. Um, most recently, because he, he, you know, he just blew it, and uh, and so he's going to be out of ministry now. And uh, but there is a way back. It's called repentance. It's called owning your stuff, taking responsibility. It's it's called listening to counsel. Uh, it's called a lot of things, but most people. That in that position, and I know what it's like, they just want to know when they're going to get back. I mean, in my early days, I would say, well, well, how long is this process going to be? You know, what are we gonna, how long are we going to do this? And they'd say, well, probably a couple of years or something. And that seemed like so long to me. But by the time I got to the couple of years, and they signed off, you know, all the powers that be signed off that he's okay, we can release him, let's bless him, let him go. They didn't know, they didn't know anything. They knew that all I did is did everything they asked me to do. But what the problem was is, and I realized this after a time, that they, had, they weren't doing anything. It was God. I was under God's discipline. Because whom the Lord loves, He disciplines. And, and He does not take any shortcuts. So after about 15 years, <laughs> I kind of I started to get get the picture, <laughs> and uh, and and I started even benefiting greatly from it. And then I started back in ministry, but but I was a different person when I started back in. Uh, and I'm not the dangerous person I was before, because I I really thought I had the goods. I don't I don't know what I thought I had, but I know that. There was a, a little, little piece of humility missing. Uh, and I realized over time that that was missing because I'm just scared. And so what I do is I become big. You know, I become big to, to cover the fact that I'm really scared. And uh, but God met me in that place and uh, of being afraid and frightened and vulnerable and began to transform and change me from the inside out. Yeah. I mean, it, because what the church emphasizes, and I, I'm, I'm here, right? I, I love the church. And, uh, but I know the church is messed up. I really do. But, and I, but I also know our intentions are really good. And, but sometimes we're missing what God wants to do with a person. And so we try to be nice to them. We try to shield them from what's going to happen to them. And sometimes we're just shielding them, them from the Lord's discipline. Uh, the Lord wants to get something done. And he wants you to get out of the way. Let me say that again. The Lord wants, wants you to get out of the way so he can do his work. So if you're with a person, then you need to represent Jesus. And Jesus isn't angry. And Jesus doesn't judge. And Jesus doesn't condemn. And Jesus isn't looking for something that we are looking for. He's looking for a changed heart. Changed heart and mind. And so he kind of outlines some of the things that he, in, in some of his writings, and this is just a handful, he tells us to walk worthy of the calling to which we've been called. To be imitators of Jesus. To honor and prefer one another. To 
to not gossip and slander. To make our ambition to mind our own business. That's actually in the Bible. Written by the Paul's Paul. And he says, make it your ambition to mind your own business. I know I was struggling as a young man and uh, people knew it and people were uncomfortable with the fact that I was leading worship. And uh, and they were coming to John and going, "What's he doing up there? What? Why are you, why are you letting him lead? He's he's a mess." And John said, "I know he's a mess, but God told me to keep my hands off him." So he kept his hands off me, probably a little bit more than he should have, but uh, but he just got away and let God do what he needed to. Well, what actually happened at one point in time? Um, I was leading worship. I take a risk, one guy. So I'm leading worship, and I'm on a little platform that's a little bit higher than this. And John had preached this message, and I, had, you know, it really struck my heart. And and then he invited people to come forward for prayer. And so I just put my guitar off on the stand, and I stepped off the platform and turned around, and just was waiting for prayer. You know, I just became one of the people getting prayer, and and that's this horrible thing happened you know sometimes you get a good person to pray for you sometimes you don't it's kind of a luck of draw <laughs> I really I really did not get a good person I got Carol Wimber and, and she came up and she's whispering in my ear and she said Lord I mean she was very passionate about this she goes Lord take him into the chamber of horrors <laughs> Like, that is not nice. I mean, but you know what? That's what I need. I need to see my sin. I need to see the destruction that sin brings. And so, over the next 20 years or so, I lived in the chamber of horrors. Uh, and it was, it was awesome and a great thing. Because God showed me who I am outside of Him. I'm really not much. Uh, outside of him. So, uh, anyway. So he says, make it your ambition to mind your own business. And, and I really, really don't think we do that well. And then he says, do all things, not some things, not the things you like. He said, you do all things without grumbling or complaining. <laughs> Anybody have the definition of all? <laughs> it's, it covers a wide variety of things. <laughs> and so if you're setting up chairs or you're, you're taking out the trash or you know, you're, whatever you do in life, he said to, to uh, do it without grumbling and complaining. And you know, he has a right to say that. Jesus has a right to say that. Because he went to the cross without grumbling, without complaining. He, he went to the cross. It says in the Hebrews it says that he despised the shame, yet for the joy set before him. He endured the cross. Hated the shame, but he endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. What is that? That he would reconcile you and you and you and you to himself, to God the Father. He made a pathway, a bridge that we could cross over into, into this place of knowing God. Wow. I'll get the punchline in a minute. Uh, and he said this, then he says a complete opposite thing. He says, rejoice always. I won't even bother. Uh, he said, not to be anxious for anything, but in prayer and supplication, make your request known to God. He told us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind and to put to death our sin, sexual immorality and, and, and purity and lust. It all boils down to like one thing. And Paul says it three different times. Uh, 
Come to Galatians 5, 6. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself in love. The only thing that counts. Again, can we get the definition only? I haven't stared over here a while, so. <laughs> we think about a lot of things. We're distracted by a lot of things. Um, one of the things I liked about my friend Bruce is, is that he's connected with the traditions of the church. He's connected with the history of the church. When I pastor the Anaheim Vineyard, I, I think I had, I don't know, 50 or 60 home group leaders. And I got a script, each one of them a subscription to Christian History Magazine. Because I just felt like it's really, really important to know our history. To know about the men and women, oh my gosh, that were tortured for Christ. You know, Bruce knows a woman, now she's in her 80s, um, that he talks to from time to time. That when she was uh, went to church, would go to church in, uh, in Russia, um, she came up to the, the doorway of the church and there's the, the priest crucified on the door. Oh God. They weren't worried about whether the air conditioning was set at the right temperature. They were worried about if I enter in this place, I'm, that's going to happen. But there's, there's a thousand stories like that. And we need to know them. They're part of our history. Uh, we, we, we all have problems. We all have difficulties. We all, and, they're, and they're real. And they're, they should embrace them and walk through them. But we all, for the most part, have first world problems. We don't have third world problems. And we have millions of brothers and sisters who do. And we need to be reminded of that. Uh, like Paul does, and in, in, uh, the writer of Hebrews does in, in Hebrews chapter eleven, you know, and then he talks about all these things they face, all these trials, all these difficulties. I'm doing my best not to cry. Uh, I think I discovered discovered an awful thing this last week. Um, you know how people. Some people have some sort of manifestation of the Holy Spirit when He comes upon them. Some people shake, some people do. There are all kinds of things. Well, I realized that mine, as I start to cry, I thought, that sucks so bad. <laughs> I, I, if I feel so ugly when I cry, you know. And I feel so stupid when I cry. I'm having breakfast with this young couple who's planning a church, and I, I must have cried four times and uh, about whatever, probably the toast or something. But uh, it, was, it was very humbling and, uh, and very, very disturbing to realize this might be God. I'm like, why would you do that to me? <laughs> you know I don't like it. <laughs> uh, there's, there's people that, people I know that, actually make fun of me when I do. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Another thing that Paul says, he said this, this is incredible. The entire law is fulfilled in one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Man. We evangelical Charismatic Christians run to and fro to one thing after another. And if the Lord leads you to, you can do anything the Lord leads you to. But don't just do something because everybody else is doing it. Mm -hmm. um, we run from place to place to place. And yet we have it. We have it. We have it right here. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. We have the crucified Christ and the risen Christ. Uh, and we've got the church, and yet we're running around like a chicken with our heads cut off. And I, I would just advise against that. I, I, I go to seminars sometimes, but I'm not going there looking for Jesus. I'm not looking, going there looking for a boost. Uh, 
I'm going there because I want to learn more. I want to grow in my faith. And then 1 Corinthians 13, which we all know, the whole text of it, but it just says all these things come down to one thing. Love. We complicate this thing so much with all these things we're going to do. And all these things we're going to do for Jesus. And all these things we're, you know, going to accomplish. But, you know, he, um, he accomplished it all on the cross. We just need to call that to remembrance. Again, my friend Bruce, he, you know, he goes to confession, which you guys, whoa. But, but he, he, he goes to compression, confession. He doesn't get in a little box where he's hidden. He sits right across from his priest and tells him. And then the priest prays for him. But he has to sit in front of the priest. And if he says, he says, I was mean to my wife more than one time, He's in big trouble. Is the priest isn't, well, he'll confront him. He'll tell him, don't take communion until you're kind to your wife. Don't minister until you can be kind to your wife. There should be a little bit more of that in our group. We, we let people minister because they're, they're gifting. And what we really need to do is bless them and honor them because of the fruit the fruit of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Kindness, gentleness, meekness, self-control against us so there's no law. So, as we look at this thing with Paul, and it's, it really is uh, too much for us to take in, but I just want us to get down to the bottom thing, and that's that if we love one another the way Christ loved the church, I mean, like my, my, my neighbors, you know, I, I'm not probably a great witness to them, but, but I'm there for them and I love them and, 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 they, and they can tell that I love them. Um, and I can see an openness in them to God because I'm just loving them. I'm just being kind to them. I'm not opening my big mouth and telling them what they need to know. Now, if God leads me at some point in time to share the elements of the gospel, I will certainly do that with all, without a doubt. But I think there is something to earning to be heard. I really do. So I think we need to be Christ. As I thought about this, I thought about uh, how we are looking for something new. And if you're in the, this stream that we swim in, you'll, you'll hear that a lot. People are looking for something new. People prophesy about something new that's going to happen. And I'm, I'm kind of in a place where I'm going, how about something old? How about attaching ourselves, rooting ourselves, and grounding ourselves in something old? Something as old as Jesus and, and his dying on the cross, his resurrection, the, 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 the history of the church. I mean, we're part of that. And so, I think we need to be aware of that. I think we need to be just as concerned about something old as we are about something new. Get it? Yeah. Hello? Hello. Yeah. Get it? Yeah. Got it. That's not the right answer. Get it? Yeah. Good. <laughs> I did want to do it. January, you want to come back up here? Um. I don't know what the other quotes are. But just put one of them up. She's got two left, I think. This is Mahatma Gandhi said this. He said, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. All you have to do is spend five minutes on Facebook. And you'll realize that that is the truth. We've allowed ourselves to be so harsh, so judgmental, so so much the purveyors of what's right and what's wrong. And I would go back to what Paul said. Make your ambition to mind your own business. Your business is this. It's to love everyone that God puts in front of you. For them to experience the love of Jesus from and through you. In, in every way, shape, and form. 
And Jesus wasn't, Jesus wasn't afraid to be seen with sinners. And even be, he counted among them. when he, They called him a drunkard and a glutton. Because he hung out with people that were drunkards and gluttons. Uh, he, they, he, hung, he broke the law all the time. But he let a leopard touch him. And that made him ceremoniously unclean. Uh, he talked to a woman at the well. Who, who nobody would do. That was totally not kosher. But he wasn't here to, to live by the rules. And this book that we study and read, it's not a rule book. It's the living word. It's the living word, and it should cut to our hearts and souls, to the very depth. And 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 so anyway, I'll, I'll just leave with this. Raise your hand. Okay, so you're in. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just do this for the next ten years. Let's just give ourselves over to love and kindness, Amen. gentleness, peace, self-control, all the good stuff. Let's do that. And let's just do it for the next 10 years and see what happens in our hearts and our lives. If we can actually become an imitator of Christ. Amen?
soft down. By your Holy Spirit, Lord, we ask that you would transform us. Like, you, like Paul encountered you and was transformed for the rest of his life. I pray, Lord, that we would experience you every day and everything in every way. We'd know your goodness and your mercy and your kindness. Lord, where we need it, we pray that you would, you would confront, that you would stop. Lord, make us into the people like your son, who was obedient to death on the cross. Amen. If you'd like somebody to pray for you, you have people that have badges on, if you'd be at back at the table. We don't have that much time. Um, and two things, I, I wanted to mention one thing, but I forgot. Um, Karen, who was up here, is she still there? I guess. Okay. She babysat my, my two young my two oldest kids when they were like five and two. It's so so fun to have her here. It's so wonderful to have her. Amen. And then you might be curious, I know you're curious, <laughs> that I'm sitting in the front row with my arm around somebody. That it's not my sister. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. That, that's not my sister, that's Evie, and she probably wants to kill me right now. But she's very friendly, and she's very talkative, so don't be afraid of her. Be afraid of me. Don't be afraid of her. Uh, so anyway, have a wonderful day. God bless you. That's your sister. That's what I did.